What's going on? Move the mouse here back in City Skylines, the town of Portsmouth with our Let's Play Season 7 episode number 2. And uh, we started with a little residential area over here in the first episode. We did a little bit of commercial. And then just to meet the demand, I started building a little industrial sector over here with a uh, our first little fix it later project. But really, the fix it later part is completely deleting this because this is not staying here. Uh, we're actually going to move industrial uh, up into this area closer to what will be the airport. We're going to have a whole trade port over here. So we're going to have uh, train, cargo. Uh, we have a shipping route we can connect to over there. And we'll do the international airport and cargo airports. So that is just kind of a temporary uh, placeholder for now. But what I wanted to do this episode was spin up a little bit more residential over here and then start to expand uh, what will eventually be kind of our, our strip malls and, and large mall up in this area. So since we've got the uh, commercial demand right now, let's go ahead and do that first. And we'll move some people in up over this way and, and we'll just kind of do a couple uh, a couple placeholders basically for some strip malls. Right now we're just doing this to meet the demand and um, it's not necessarily going to be the, uh, the final shape of everything, but I just wanted to commit a little bit of space to that up this way. They might even have a little bit of problem because there's not residents nearby, but hopefully that will sort itself out. Why don't we, we'll do this too. So electricity is passing there thanks to the electric roads mod. Saves us a little bit of headache when it comes to building, but we could just, you know, extend some power lines from here to there. Nothing that's too tough to keep up with if you're playing on console, but I'll extend the water coverage this way as well. Already got some businesses moving in. Excellent. So we'll let that kind of fill in a little bit. We will have to extend this for now. Let's see what kind of room we have to work with. We'll just keep doing it over here. Um, it's not going to be the most efficient, but it works. And again, we'll probably be moving this out uh, two more episodes or so. Once we, once we get a couple more tiles and we can start buying uh, that area up by the airport, we want to buy this one next. This is kind of where the main downtown area is. And then after that, we can think about up here, but we're not going to unlock things like the airport um, legitimately in this build because we're not ever going to hit the, the population milestones that we need to for that. So we've got residential demand just barely creeping up and then it's gone again because we've still got so much zoning happening over here. So I do want to start to define these neighborhoods, but it's also going to be a little bit of a waste if we don't uh, have the demand. So maybe just uh, a little bit of a... A little bit of a framework down here. So in the real Portsmouth, there's kind of this road that comes off the highway here and sort of acts as a, a collector road or, or a kind of arterial for this area of the city. And then all the residents are in there up behind that. There's also a little baseball field and park over here. So we want to save room for that. But I just wanted to kind of frame off a little bit of this zoning over here. And well, let's come up about two. When I say two, I mean 20 units. And then we've got this little bit of mounding that happens over here. This, this is kind of what we want to constrain the, uh, the residential area to. And then there'll be another one over here. But that kind of acts as a natural barrier. So let's come up like this and we'll start to curve towards there. And we're just kind of, again, defining a little bit of area for uh, future residential expansion. But we don't need that right now because we've got all this happening over here. So let's take a look. It looks like we are having problems with electricity. We've got to get the sewage out of here at some point. But unfortunately, the way I kind of set the map up, a little bit limited there um, but that is that's just something we kind of have to deal with it's not you know the perfect map um, so we have we have to kind of deal with what we're given with this tiny little pocket of water but electricity wise we're running into the yellow or even the red now so let's look at economy and see what we did with our budget we can ramp that back up to 100 
and then water we're still in the green so i'll leave that for now garbage processing is in the red so let's get another recycled plant up here for now should get us into the yellow if not the green oh nice okay very very good into the green let me throw it on so that we're not looking at, you know, the flat shadows of noon all the time. Let's let's set it to early morning so that those shadows have some depth just to get our town in a little bit different light and kind of see what it looks like. So hopefully everybody enjoyed the uh, the first episode. I know a lot of people were able to come out for the premiere and I'm super excited about that. It was fun to kind of live chat and, and get feedback and make jokes with everybody and talk about my mistakes. And um, if you made it, thank you so much. If you couldn't make it, um, I believe you can watch the live chat on replay if I set it up correctly, but, um, but let me know in the comments down below what you thought of episode number one, what you'd like to see out of this town. We've got some ideas that we're again, borrowing from the real Portsmouth and we're gonna have to build some keys over here. Well, maybe not. This might be this might be far enough away. We're definitely gonna do some keys when we get into the. the you can see the, uh, the over here the the coast is not quite as defined. So we're definitely gonna want to barricade off the water a little bit over there. Demand wise, we're pretty. Demand-wise, we're pretty flat right now. We're trying to get to 1,700 to get to our next milestone here. So maybe I'll throw it on three times speed and see what uh, what zoning needs develop. And we'll answer those as we go. And we'll keep an eye on things over here. Did I not drop in a high school yet? Was that an option? Or is that not till the next milestone? It's telling me people are eligible. We don't unlock it till 1700 anyway, so back on three times speed. Obviously, university is a problem, but we don't unlock that for quite a while. Fire department availability, not so great. I should have put this closer to this intersection, maybe. And then, of course, we have no fire coverage over here. Oh, I didn't zone that, did I? That's not helping our industrial demand if we don't zone it. Somebody was shaking their fist, I'm sure. Apologies. Make sure this is all covered. A little more overlap than we need, but that's fine. So let's let that demand build up. Let's see what we've got for spare zoning on commercial. We've still got a good amount there. We've got lots of residential and a good amount of industrial. I guess we could drop another fire department or two. Right now with the money we have just one. But I'm thinking obviously the worst, the worst off area is over here. So let's Let's throw a fire department over this way. Throw it right there. Police crime, we'll deal with that later. That's okay. Fire can be very disruptive though. Did we? Yes, we did. Enable smoke detector distribution. Sorry to Kung Fu and Decoy, but we may not see the entire map burst into flames just yet. But, but wait till we get all those trees and... I'm sure something something will happen. So demands are pretty flat because we've got enough zoning for everything. So um, I'll just leave this on three times speed for a minute and I'll time lapse it and we'll talk to you in a moment. All right, so I'm going to pause it here for a moment because our budget is not doing so hot. So let's take a look at what I messed up. 12% taxes across the board. Where are we spending all our money? What do we have excess of? How's our water? Man, our water availability is way up there. So let's throw that down. Try to make a little bit more money. Nope, too much. Throw it in the middle. 75. Does that get us good into the green? Wow, that's quite the jump. About 
How about 60%? Okay, there we go. A little bit, a little bit better. Electricity wise, we're right on the cusp at 100%. So we're going to need another power plant very soon. Uh, sewage is good. Garbage processing is still comfortably into the green. We won't change that around just yet. And schools wise, we have, I think just the one school supporting everything right now. We need a high school, but we still need to get to 1700 to do that. Population growth is really slow right now, but when we unlock parks, we should be in good shape. Uh, did we unlock cemeteries yet? We did not. Is that also at 1700? Population of 2800 before you can have a cemetery? Really? Is that, is that correct? That seems so wrong to me. I feel like we're going to have a lot of dead bodies piling up before we get to that milestone. Because our growth is just so, so slow right now. It's it's nothing. Um, maybe, maybe we turn down taxes on residential, but we're really not making a lot of money. So I don't know that we can afford to do that right now. You may have seen in the last episode, we had quite a bit of traffic piling up over here. Haven't done anything with traffic managers. It just settled down because, you know, everybody moves in at once and all the traffic comes in and then they start going about their regular routines and don't have to worry about it too much. So yeah, why is our budget in the negative? Do I have, I got too much stuff going on. I think I'm, cause I'm spread out so far, right? People aren't coming over here to work. Let's see, where's a good cross avenue? So maybe we'll, let's give people an option to, to bypass the highway and come up through here. We'll go over the highway for now. And maybe that will encourage some people to take the drive over there and, and head to work that way. But we will see. Because this area is not doing so good. I, I spread things out much too far, too fast. Got a lot of pollution happening over here from the dumps and the coal plant. Yeah, growth is really, really hurting right now. It's a good thing I took out that loan. Once we can drop some parks in and kind of raise the land value, it'll make living in these areas more appealing. It should encourage more people to grow to, to come into the town. But I've never had population growth so low. One, two, like we need people coming in. All right, let me throw it on uh, on three times speed again, and uh, and hopefully, um, or it, it is on three times speed. But let me time lapse this again. We'll be right back. We'll see if it'll it'll settle down. All right, so I was letting that play for a little bit, and we definitely got the demand creeping up. Um, so much so that we used up all the zoning, and I let it play a little bit longer. And uh, yeah, we kind of we kind of slowed our growth. But I want to I wanted to pause it and define some area here, or, or at least slow it down to one time speed, because we do have a ton of demand coming up for residential, or not. You know, we're we're halfway up the meter. That's pretty good from where we were at. So. We did hit that milestone while I was in the cinematic view. So we can start kind of figuring out some of our extra little neighborhoods over here. And I'm, I'm doing this more to kind of borrow some ideas from, from Portsmouth. Spreading out like this isn't necessarily the best idea, but that's okay. So I want to kind of follow this ridge line over here. Bring it over this way. And then kind of have this round loop back here. Which kind of connects back in maybe over this way. So that hill's a little funny. We probably won't zone right there. Or if we do zone just to move people in, we'll eventually move them out. To have that kind of make a little bit more sense 
Then I want to have a couple more roads through here also. We'll do something like that. And I don't want to really do one there. Maybe we can have kind of a cut through like this. It did a little bit of space that wasn't zonable there. So let me see if I can fix that. Um, let's break this. Let's try smoothing this out now that we have access to the landscaping tool. But we got to be careful not to waste all of our money. So brush strength way down. Uh... <laughs> what was I just saying about not wasting all my money? Um, that is the wrong tool. That is the raised terrain tool. Oh, but I'm totally cheating because I have extra landscaping tools and it doesn't cost me money. So I take it back. So there's the first kind of there. There's the first time we cheated is thanks to mods, extra landscaping tools. Landscaping doesn't necessarily have to cost money. Uh, so sorry for that. I was I was really hoping on not not cheating just yet. Um, I mean, not that the mods are. are I mean, they are, they are cheating when you look at things from a console perspective, right? It's it's going against the intent of the game that everything costs you money and you have to balance out all these decisions. But that was totally, totally unintentional. And I thought to myself in the back of my head, like, you know, hey, let's, let's not waste money here. I should probably save it first, but that's okay. I'm a pro at this. And then I raised the terrain, made a mountain out of nowhere. So, so, so thank goodness for uh, extra landscaping tools not costing us as much. Or did it? Did it take all the money on my bank after the fact? I don't even know. I was up around twelve thousand. I'd have to double check. But we don't. Either way, we definitely are bleeding some money there. Um, we've got more. More than anything, we've got industrial demand. So, do we keep making a, a dirty pocket of industry over here? What's using this road, by the way? Is it all trucks coming to, to commercial, it looks like? I guess so. Uh, let's make sure all of this is zoned off. I don't think that it is, but all this would be residential pocket over here. Oh, man. I don't know if you can hear my stomach growling on, uh, on the microphone, but it is screaming at me to, uh, to put some food in. I, I, I'm recording this in the morning. Haven't had breakfast yet. I'm not really a breakfast eater. Um, I do love breakfast. One of the things um, I wanted to kind of talk about in each episode was some fun facts about New England. Um, and one thing that we're definitely famous for is 24-7 diners. Like, they're just everywhere. There, there isn't, there isn't, you know, even if you're in the middle of nowhere, within a 15-20 minute drive, there's probably a 24-7 a diner someplace nearby. And apparently that is not a thing that is as common elsewhere, at least what I've read. But uh, but let me know in the comments. So I do, I was saying, I don't generally eat breakfast in the morning, not at least first thing, but I love breakfast. Breakfast is my favorite meal. I just tend to eat it very late in the day or in the middle of the night. If you're from... Uh, if you're from the New England area, not that it's close to Portsmouth, but there's a couple of uh, diners, very famous. You may have seen them on diners, dives and drive-ins, or whatever that show is with Guy. Uh, the Red Arrow, absolutely fantastic diner. And I think they've got one in Manchester, New Hampshire, Londonderry, and someplace else, I feel like. Milford or something, a little, a little town somewhere. But uh, Manchester's the original one. Right off of uh, Elm Street in Manchester. Fantastic diner. 24-7, 365. I think they close for Christmas and that's it. But I could be Christmas and Thanksgiving maybe. And that's it. Uh, so over here, I should pause it because while I'm rambling on, 
we did unlock some things. So we haven't unlocked the tile yet. We did unlock parks and plazas. We can start to beautify our town. I think that would be a really good idea. Uh, let's see, landscaping. So let's drop in a couple parks and plazas. Uh, I've talked about this before. Basketball court, tennis court, dog park, and Paradox Plaza. Those seem to be the best return on investment. So basically every park has a cost, has an upkeep, and a certain amount of possible pollution, noise pollution, and entertainment. And when you look at this, it's like it's $5,000, 40 a week upkeep. If you look at something like the basketball court, it's $4,000, 48 per week upkeep. Provides the same entertainment, so it's a little bit cheaper to drop in. Um, and even better than that, where is, where is Paradox Plaza? They move it on me? Find it, this is a great mod. If you're looking for something, uh, and you can type, why did it not say that I just unlocked that? Am I imagining things? Did I break something with my combo of mods? Isn't Paradox Plaza one of the options? And didn't I set up my... Did I not set up my Paradox account with this game? All right, if somebody knows what I'm doing wrong, I think maybe I just didn't didn't connect my Paradox uh, to my PC build. So let's go with the basketball court because it's probably the next best option. At least in my mind, dog park's pretty good too. But you can see it provides a, a really decent happiness bubble. And it's going to raise the land value all through here. So we want to kind of do this on a central avenue somewhere around here. So let's see, what house do we want to move out? Like this house doesn't doesn't fit the motif in my in my mind. Right? We want those little smaller suburban houses. So if we gotta move somebody out, that's a great start. And that makes everybody pretty happy around there. Um, let's see. Let's hit play. We are making a little bit of money right now. So let's come over here. A little laggy. <laughs> Somebody mentioned in the comments like, hey, the frame rate. Um, yeah, that is that is PC. So you can't see my overlay right now. But right now we're getting 17 frames per second. And this is just kind of what happens when you are playing on PC with mods. It's, uh, I, I don't have a, a bad computer by any means. I mean, it's not a, a beast, but I am running an, uh, a 7th gen i7, 7700K, a 1660 Ti GTX, and 32 gig of RAM. And uh, for those that were on the premiere, we were talking, I left the, the actual load time in the video while I was kind of introing the series on episode one. And it's legit two solid minutes of just sitting there at the load screen. And and that's very low on the PC side. So some of the creators um, that use thousands and thousands of assets and, you know, plop down every little aspect of their city, they might have 30 to 45, maybe even an hour of load time before they can get into the map because you're adding in all these assets. And it's one of the reasons why consoles can't kind of support that, right? They don't, they don't have 32 or 64 gig of RAM. Um, so they can't really... They can't really handle the same load. At least they're not designed to. Maybe they could, but but it's kind of a quality control thing, I think. Right? They don't want you to get a console experience and then wait an hour to load a game. Where PC... Uh, I, you know, I'm willing to put up with a, a long load time, but I'm going to reduce my assets where I can load in two minutes, not 20. I, I just think that's crazy. But those are, you know, the people that are getting very creative and plop down every building... Um, you know, they 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 want to take that extra step and I want to meet somewhere in the middle. I want to let zoning handle a lot of my build and then pop down some buildings here or there. But and we'll be talking about how to do that, too. So I wanted to cover kind of a mod in each episode. So since we hit a milestone, let's do something here. Let's pause it for a minute and let's let's paint a couple districts. So we're gonna call all this one district for now.
And then I mentioned this, I think, on the... Uh, I mentioned this in the chat of the premiere of episode number one. Painting with a mouse, like I go, I go so slow. It's like, it's just relaxing to paint zoning or districts and it's actually enjoyable. Whereas that's a super frustrating experience with a controller. And I just, blah, 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 I just, I go everywhere. <laughs> I just paint everywhere as fast as possible with a controller. Um, so we're going to paint a couple districts here and we're not necessarily going to do a district style yet, but I do want to show that because towards the end of every episode, I, I want to do a little, a little mini tutorial on a mod just to kind of show you some of the insight into what we'll be doing this season. So we've defined two districts here. And in fact, I'll have to double check this, but I'm 99% sure that this one is called Atlantic Heights. I, I am going to double check that before the next episode though, but this area is called Atlantic Heights in the actual Portsmouth, this area. Um, right here over on, on this tip of the coast and to the left of uh, 95, which unfortunately I forgot to rename that. I don't know if you can rename it in the map editor, but but I will rename this at some point to 95 North, 95 South, just for, for kind of consistency. Sorry, but I'm, I'm getting distracted. Surprise, surprise. So we've painted the district and you can kind of, you can do a little bit of this on console, at least on PS4 and Xbox, is you can come in, you can say themes. And then you have different themes that are, are built in, right? European suburbia, European. Uh, so I've started creating my own and one of them is uh, Portsmouth downtown. So if we enable theme management, now we can click one of these boxes and say, I want the buildings in this district to adhere to the types of buildings that are part of a particular theme. And we can actually on PC come into the theme manager and then change things around. So let me give you a very quick glimpse of uh, what is part of Portsmouth downtown? Let me see here. Can I show just the ones included? Okay, here we go. So I did include the Simpsons house. Oh no, did I just check a box and screw that up? No, okay. All right, yeah, that's that's correct. <laughs> Man, all right. So these are all houses that I've included in what's called Portsmouth Downtown. And, and for the most part, the Portsmouth Downtown, we're going to be focusing in on the uh, townhouses and row houses. So these buildings kind of sit smack right up next to one another. The townhouses are kind of more of a residential feel, where if you look at something like the row houses... Or the or the these built-in Euro buildings, right? This is more of kind of your commercial downtown area, the Euro rows and things like that. And then you see a lot of three deckers. These are especially outside of Boston, but but they fit the New England theme pretty well. And then we've got things like Dunkin' Donuts, all sorts of shopping center buildings that are actual shops that are in the area that I've I've hunted down. Um, but you can kind of check off and say, okay, for this theme, I want to include these buildings and not these buildings. That should not be checked. I'll have to go back through this and make sure I didn't mess it up. But um, And then basically you could set that on a particular district. So if I check that, only those types of buildings will move in. Um, but that is the theme manager mod that uh, allows you to do that. So you, everybody can do themes, um, Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. But defining custom buildings in those themes is something that you need the theme manager mod for. And then you can save those and export those. And I'll, I'll try and look into that and, uh, and post that as well. But that's just a quick glimpse at, um, at the theme manager and kind of how I'll be, especially when we get to the downtown, sorry, the downtown over here on this peninsula, um, how that will all be working. Got to get the sewage out of there. Just no water flow happening here. It's, it's, so, it's so stagnant. And I'm sure it smells over there. And we've got to uh, we got to clean things up for our downtown when we eventually build that up. So milestone wise, next episode we should have no problem hitting 2,800, and that'll get us yet another zone. And I think we could either go over here and start working on the downtown, or what I think may make more sense is buying these two tiles up here, moving industry up there towards the airport continuing to expand on on this half of the peninsula and start to focus in on our big mall area up here 
and then we can kind of focus in on the downtown area. But there's lots of different things we can do in this build. Um, there's uh, even though it's a small town, it's it's a pretty spread out concept, and I think it's going to be a fun build. So stay tuned. Uh, new episodes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hopefully you enjoyed. But I think that's a good spot to break for today. So let me throw it in. Uh, nope. Let me throw it in cinematic camera mode and fly around our city at random. Um, and actually, I take it back. Let's throw it on four times speed cycle, eight times speed cycle, and we'll watch some sunrise and sunsets happen. We'll watch the sun move around and, and shift some angles as we uh, as we do these uh, cinematic overview of the city. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's going to come together pretty fast at some point, but it's still kind of in the early stages of setting up this city. So um, we've got some really fun stuff to do. I'm just kind of trying to meet the demand and make some money and uh, and see where we can get to legitimately before we have to rely on, on cheats. Again, we're going to try and get to around uh, Capital City or Grand City. Those two milestones um, are around 22,000 to 30,000 or something like that. And uh, that's kind of where we're going to stop unlocking the milestones legitimately and we're gonna have to uh, do some cheats at that point because I don't want the city to get too big population wise it isn't a big city it's a 20,000 pop city so to get some of those things like the airport and the other things we'll have to do like the unlock all at that point but first half of the season is gonna be very um, very organic for the most part I'll touch on mods here or there uh, but as you can see so far hopefully I'm not uh, not using too much of them so uh, even the uh, the the console vanilla players if you're playing mod free, you know, you should be able to follow along with this build. And again, if you haven't uh, checked it out already, there's a link. And again, if you haven't checked it out already. Oh, no. I hope I have autosave turned on. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure we just crashed. That industrial area looks filthy, by the way. So, give me a minute here, and we'll uh, we'll be right back and see if autosave was turned on. And how often I have it the interval set to. Yeah, so my game totally crashed. And uh, I started trying to rebuild uh, what I had done. Spun this up. It's going to look a little bit different in the next episode. Not quite exactly the same structure. Um, but... The joys of cities on PC. Things that we generally don't have to deal with um, on console. I think I've crashed maybe three times tops. And I've played on console about a thousand hours or more. So definitely uh, a lot less crashes than I deal with uh, on the PC side. Not that it's terrible. But uh, it's odd sometimes some things that set it off. Um, so I did try and kind of recreate what uh, what was happening before but uh, it's not at a it's not an exact one-to-one -one of where it was but hopefully we've recaptured the spirit of what we built in today's episode but if uh, again if things look a little bit different it's because it crashed on uh, on that cinematic outro so let's see uh, we're running out of power so let's sort that out that's gonna be a budgetary thing for a moment but very soon we're gonna need to add very soon we're going to need to add more uh, power plants before we know it. We don't have the money for it right now. So where are we at? 2,400 of what? 2,800? And that'll get us a new zone, new policies, uh, highways, which will be good. We can clean up some of those, uh, some of those intersections. This one down here, this is going to get turned into a diamond. And this over here is just a mess that, again, will eventually move up uh, up over there by the, where the airport will be. But here's uh, here's our city at night. So maybe um, I'll do uh, a little uh, cinematic flyby to show you uh, kind of the, the intro for next episode, kind of where things left off. Um, so I'll do like a, a sunrise flyover and then we'll pick up in episode three. Uh, first thing in the morning in the town of Portsmouth. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Apologies for the crash. Let me um, do something before I forget. We'll save episode two. 
an episode two backup because obviously things can go sideways. We had two fires this episode. Oh no. Did I put another fire department in over here? I must have. So we've got some worker problems. We've got to get some transport options. People just live way too far away to make that a, uh, a really viable zone. But again, I'm, I'm kind of expanding not how you should when building a city, but more based on... Uh, not, the industry is not going over there, so I shouldn't say based on where stuff is, but I just wanted it away from the population. Um, these two residential pockets are definitely um, kind of more realistic in terms of what we would actually see. Um, coming off of this main avenue, we'll have another one that hooks in to create over here, but that does not have any kind of connector coming that way. There is IRL, I think a rail path that runs through here. We built our rail over that way. It's again, it's not a one-to-one. -one. If you know the area, um, don't get uh, too concerned about the small details. But we're trying to hit some of the major beats and uh, and create the town of Portsmouth uh, 2.0, if you will. But it's going to borrow a lot from the city. Um, hopefully, you are enjoying the series so far. Um, it's a shame about the crash, and I rebuilt things as best as I could. But uh, I'll try and uh, save more often, especially before I do things like cinematic camera in the future. So we've got some problems. We'll uh, we'll uh, make sure all that is sorted out as we kick off the next episode and consider um, what tile we might want to buy if we want to expand. We've got so much room in these tiles um, that we own right now. When we hit the next milestone, it may not even be uh, that pressing of an issue to buy another tile because we can still expand residential pockets, huge commercial pocket up here. We can keep building temporary industrial um, over to the left of the screen before we eventually move it up to where it will be near the airport. But hopefully you're enjoying the series. If you are, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. There's that milestone, perfect timing. We'll pick up there on the next episode, drop in a cemetery and check out all the other things. If you're new here, subscribe and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. Check back for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We've got a console build live stream that we just kicked off on Sunday night. So get caught up on that if you missed it. And if you want to tune in, that's Thursday and Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Until the next one, though, this is Move the Mouse signing off. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. <laughs>